So hi guys and welcome back to J9 Retail Books. This week I have a book haul from a trip. I've recently taken to London and where I met up with my friend Tracy over at Flamingo Reads here on YouTube. We've known each other for quite a few years now. We met at university and we like to meet up and go to London and we're both complete nerds when it comes to books so it always works out really well. This this trip was entirely book related. Um, we normally get, normally go to Primark and other places, but no, this was bookshops. Bookshops, lunch and then bookshops. So it works really well. So here we go. First place that we went was Scoob Books, um, which is in the Brunswick Centre in London. Uh, Second hand bookshop which is just fantastic. We probably could have spent the entire day in there, to be honest, and probably spent a lot of money. Uh, but we decided it was just worth sort of a bit of a quick trip. Tracy was looking to see if they had some of the stuff that she was looking for on her list that she was allowed, and I'm just quite happy to look in bookstores all day long. So I purchased for £4.50 Schindler's, Schindler's Ark um, by Thomas Keneally. Keneally? <laughs> so... This is the book that Schindler's List, the film by Steven Spielberg, was based on. Which in this book is based on Oscar Schindler's life with his, so obviously some of it being stories, some of it being fictionalised. So the facts are true but there's obviously various things that you don't know what's happened so it's fictionalised, if that makes any sense. The one thing that I love, I struck me about this because um, this book was published in 1982 it cost all of £2.95 books used to be so cheap um, <laughs> so I'm I'm, gonna, I'm excited to read this because I have seen the film I do like the film and I'm a history nut and World War 2 is definitely a period of history that I do like to study and read and so this should be an interesting book. It is normal size, maybe smaller than normal size print, so it could take me a while to get through. It's a fair few pages, but I'm going to give it a good go anyway, and I shall enjoy reading that. The next book here is my uh, buddy read with Tracy. We both decided that we wanted to read this. We were in Persephone Books because we went to London. Um, <laughs> so this is The World That Was Ours by Hilda Bernstein, 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 one of the two, I say Steen but I could be wrong. Uh, it's book number 50 from Persephone Books and the end paper is this absolutely quite fantastic blue and gold pattern. I um, can't remember what it was, it just says somewhere what they are. So this is about the author. Um, and her time living in South Africa. So this looks really interesting. I can't wait to read this. I still haven't started it yet and I'm going to tell you now it's the 17th of November. This may turn into a December buddy read. Along with the December buddy read we also have going but hey. <laughs> it's take, I've got taken me a while to sort some stuff out as the background changing desks and rooms and it's taken a lot longer to do that and so reading's taken a back, side, a back seat sorry, to sorting all this stuff out. The next one I purchased was The Shuttle by Frances Hodgen Burnett. So this is another one by the woman who wrote Secret Garden. This is book number 71 from Persephone and the end paper is this lovely floral pattern that I love. This is about... Um, American beauties, ma uh, beautiful American women marrying London aristocrats, I believe. So it looks intriguing. It is a whopper of a book. This is going to take me a while. I've got no idea what I've in my book. I've got stuff like my book. Ah, sorry, book. <laughs> Not quite sure what happened there. The next one, the last one from Persephone Books, because they're three for thirty pounds. So this is me and Tracy. We were like three. <laughs> um, I also purchased London War Notes by Molly, pa Molly, Molly Panter Downs. Uh, this is book number 111, so this is a fairly recent 
one and this has Churchill uh, and the uh, British flag on it and this is non-fiction again I've got two non-fictions and one partial fiction so far and this is Molly, Pant Molly Pantadowns wrote pieces for the the New Yorker for well, during World War Two, and this is a collection of those so that will be really really interesting and again I have a history nut so love it uh, oh, the next place we went is a Forbidden Planet now this is completely Tracy's fault and also Cat over at um, Catastic Catastic Books um, Cat O'Keefe it's kind of your fault but mostly Tracy's fault I have Saga book one I'm a fair way through made it fairly through in one night I stopped myself so that I could film this video so I haven't picked it up for a while but this this is glorious and I now can't wait for the next one so Tracy's got me addicted to something bad not good my wallet doesn't like Tracy anymore <laughs> so Saga um, it's a graphic it's sorry it's a comic series published in um, Every each the six six issues are published in books, and three books three issues were three collections were bound into this book. They are currently, if I remember rightly, they are publishing the ones that will then lead up to book six. So, which then will be another three to put in the hardback. So we don't we shouldn't have to wait horrendously long for the next one. I didn't discover this as it was published, otherwise that would be bad. But I still have to wait for the next one, and. <laughs> I don't like waiting for books to be published. I have issues with it. So yeah, that's Tracy's fault. Thoroughly, thoroughly Tracy's fault. Now, we then went to Foyle's Bookshop, Charing Cross Road in London. Okay, I could spend a lot of money in there too. We decided while doing a November buddy read, we also decided to do, let me just check my timer here, my camera battery is only so long so I have to, I've got a little kitchen timer here. Um, I ha We decided to do a December buddy read and we decided to do A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens because neither of us have read it. This is a lovely, lovely tiny book. This will not take very long to read at all. Um, I can't wait to read this in some ways because having, I've seen The Muppets Christmas Carol <laughs> which is based off of this, but I've never actually read this. So, always good. On the Charles Dickens front, actually more the, why this book looks beautiful and I need a new, well, I don't need a new copy, I want a new copy. This is Great Expectations. These are the cloth bound penguin classics. This is dark blue with a lovely cream chandelier on it and it's hardback and it's got the ribbon and it's expensive, but it's so beautiful. So it's in my collection. I'm really happy. I want to read this again. I've read it, read it at school for GCSEs, but I can never reread my school copy because I've annotated the hell out of it. Um, so, yeah, this this next book here is also Tracy's fault. A because she's got it, and B because she found another copy and we found I think it was Dracula, and she said, "Oh, well, this is like the Jane Eyre copy," and then I remembered and I had to find it. This is Jane Eyre. <laughs> This is the Penguin Classics Deluxe Edition. This is the one with the um, artist drawings on the front and the back and both end flaps. I've got French flaps, whatever you call this, I've got this on. Um, Burning Thornfield. Oh no, that's Burning Thornfield House. That's not Burning Thornfield House. Oh, I was already reading this for... Um, anyway, it's on my Kindle. But I've never had a physical copy and this looks so cool, pretty and lovely. And so, yeah, book nerd problems. The cover looks nice. I kind of have to buy it. Uh, this has also got the, the ends here that uh, look worn as well. So it looks really pretty. My wallet doesn't like me when I go to London. <laughs> London, it really doesn't. This next one was definitely not a planned buy. In fact, this is definitely well and truly, I shouldn't have, <laughs> my brain should have turned itself back on before I purchased this. This is the Moleskine, um, 2016 page a day diary with RTD21, which is why I bought it. And let me take this off. This was a lot of money. I can't remember how much money. 
I don't think I want to remember how much money. Uh, you do get in, inside here a little Star Wing X Star Wars X Wing fighter thing. But I bought this. This is a book journal, hence why it's in this haul. Uh, this is. I love that. Sunday doesn't have a schedule on it, and I think that's actually right. That's quite good. That's that, that's different. Um, this is actually got it's got it's got times down the side. I'm going to use this as a book journal to keep a track of what I'm reading, when, and how much I've read in a session, how much time I've had for reading, to help me maybe see a pattern assess how to do things so that I can do the Goodreads challenge next year and do 100 books instead of 75. I'm still short for this year, uh, but it is the middle of November. I've got, a, I've got a, like six weeks in which to read a few more books and I'm going to plough through a few. I'm nearly finished Jane Eyre. I've nearly finished Saga here. Christmas Carol won't take me long. So yes, I will um, definitely be reading a few more books and I've got a few Audible audio books on the go as well. So there is that angle. But this, you definitely don't need to spend the amount of money I did on this. It's got R2D2 on it. It's Moleskine's fault. Foils Bookshop and Moleskine. That's why. That's my stand and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so thanks guys for watching this lovely book haul video. Uh, please go and check out Tracy over at Flamingo Reads. She will be linked down below. You can tell her I sent you if you'd like, but that's up to you. Uh, please like, comment and subscribe to see more book nerd videos from me. And I shall see you next Friday here on J9 Retail Books. Bye guys. <laughs>